Hey guys, this is Shane and welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel and today I'm going to talk about selling Reader's Digest condensed books. The original abridged book compilations, you see them all the time. Uh, if you can get them at the right price, you can make some good money on them. So we'll talk about strategies for that, how you, how you do that, and um, what people use them for. So hope you find this, this uh, video interesting. Look forward to some comments and uh, subscribe and uh, look forward to, to, to hearing what you think. So with that, let's just, let's jump right in. So, okay, you see these things, I see them all over, all over the place. And like a lot of things, the Reader's Digest books, if you can get them for the right price, you can make good money on them. I often find these at my library bookstore for 25 cents each. Sometimes I go to estate sales and nobody touches them. I went to an estate sale several months ago. The lady said, I'll take them all for a dollar. Basically, she just wanted to get rid of them so they, when they were cleaning up at the end of the sale, they didn't have, have to worry about it. Now, if you're in a place that your thrift stores are still charging these like hardbacks and they're a dollar, dollar ninety nine, two ninety nine, this isn't going to work for you. But if you can get them for the right price, twenty five cents each, that kind of price range, you can make good money because they sell when you sell them as Reader's Digest condensed lots. They sell typically for about two dollars each when they sell them in bulk. Sometimes up to three dollars, sometimes maybe a dollar fifty, but the average it's around two to two fifty. A book so if you put five or six of these together you can expect to sell that for 10 to 15 bucks and you only have a dollar in it and shipping will be on top of that so you can make good value with it so let's just little backstory of Reader's Digest you know maybe you're familiar with it maybe you aren't but the condensed book started in like 1950 and they went through like late 90s 97 time frame and then they still did them but they changed the name to like select editions or something so what's interesting about them, <clears throat> people do not buy these to read. <clears throat> what they buy them for is for decoration, all right? So they are, this is your classic, uh, let me turn them around this way where you, maybe I won't drop them, uh, even though that might be a good video. It's classic decoration, all right? And, and I'll show these, but this is like how they started in the 50s into the early 60s, late 60s, early 70s through the 80s, and in the 90s how they changed. So just to kind of show you how the format changed, <clears throat> in 1950 through um, about 1957, I know for sure, was 50, I think it's 58 or 59, they changed. But in that case, it, in those early 50s, they were brown. And so when you have a bunch of these together, they look like these leather volumes, very decorative, and they're great sellers. And also they have these decorative uh, covers. So people buy these as decorative book sets or books of color, or uh, some people do crafts with them where they'll, they'll stick them together, glue them together, make lamps out of them. Some people will uh, cut out the insides and make little, little decorative um, like treasure chests or hidey holes to put on your shelf. There's a lot of crafts that get done with them, especially when they have the decorative book faces, all right, the, the, the end covers. But in the 50s, they were this brown. Then, as they moved <clears throat> into the, the late 50s, like I said, 58 to 59, I know that the brown ones were through 57, they still kept these really decorative um, covers, but you can see they started going to the colored, and, and they had this nice ornate thing on, on the top, and this, this script RD for Reader's Digest on the bottom. And you know, they always had somewhere between three and six stories, most of the time four or five. But that was, this was a, a 1961, okay? So then in the late 60s, they still kept, you know, the decorative uh, covers, but you can see now they changed the format a little bit. So you can kind of see from the early 60s to the late 60s, just a little bit of change on the script. They also were publishing these four times a year. And if you were winter, you might get the snowflake. It was winter, spring, summer, fall, okay? Then as you moved into the 80s, they got, uh, actually it's in the early 70s, this is 1972 one. You can see it went to this, this very uh, blockish and it was more just about the color, okay? And each quarter, it was a different color. And they kept that really into the into the 80s. Here's another one, the decorative book plates, uh, end covers, and then you know from the from the 
1972 to this is like a 1980, uh, I was looking at this, like 1983. So you can see how they really didn't change it much. Then into the 90s, they were, here's a 1992 one. So you no longer have the, the, the decorative books, but you have this kind of format and it's really bright colors. And a lot of people like those. All right, so that's just how the design from a decorative design perspective evolved over the years. So how, how can you list these? How can you list these and make money? Again, people are buying Reader's Digest condensed books and it's amazing when I have them out there how many hits I get on my store where people were searching for Reader's Digest condensed books. Before I made this video, I looked and there were like 4,000 listings, 4,500 listings or so that can, contained Reader's Digest condensed books. And there were almost 600 sold, okay? So there's a lot out there, a lot of sold, but there's a ton of them out there. So how can you uh, distinguish your listings from others and make people buy yours? So first off, you can list these things as um, colored sets, okay? So like here's a set of 1956, 57-ish, um, and I could list these all as brown. Anytime I find these brown ones from the 50s, I buy them. They're cool. They look very elegant. They are from the 50s. They're old. People love them. A set like this will, will sell. A set of four like this, it's, this would be how I would sell them. This would bring easy 20 bucks. If I can get them for a quarter a piece, that's a dollar, right? So I'm making good profit on them. Shipping's on top of that. Now, the um, always watch and make sure that the they're not pulled, they're not damaged on the end where people pulled them off of the shelf. But one way to sell these are as the same color. Also, you can sell it as the same as a year. That will set you apart. Some people will like all of the 1957 or all the 1955s, all four of them. So you can sell them as brown color and as a year. That's one way to set yourself apart. All right. Then let's, let's just show um, how maybe like here's a newer set. This is from the 80s. Again, if people are interested in these covers, they're not going to care about it. But I might list them as a set of blues. So I'm also can put it, put them together in the same color profile. So somebody can buy these decorative, they can put them right on their shelf and they, if they want blue accents, they've got it, right? Uh, here's another example, kind of in the same color palette um, from some of them from the 60s. And what I find is I wouldn't really match, mix and match from like, you know, like 1990s ones with 1960 ones. I just don't think they, they would look right. That's just me. But see, here's some from the 60s and you've got different colors but the, you know, they're all kind of this tannish, um, I don't know, taupe kind of color with the color accents. They're all the same style. So these would go together visually pleasing, all from the 60s, another way to list them. Now, the newer ones, what people like, I think, about them is if you can just put some of the newer ones together, here's three, just so like easy to show, they are bright and brilliant. So, you know, there's orange ones and yellow ones, and you can throw all these together very vivid on, on the shelf so people like that so you can you can sell by you know color with you know with the right same age color fancy colors browns keep them together you can you can sell by the year um, but in general what you're going to do is you're, you're in your listing title readers digest condensed books include words like books of color decorative book set and you can put the years that'll help help you sell them. People will buy these for crafts and for decorations, okay? So you can sell them as just a generic lot, a bunch of different colors, put 20 of them together or 10 of them, whatever. You can sell them by all blues or purples or whatever, um, you know, different styles. M take really good photos of them to set yourself apart, make it look artsy. Um, I've had success with this on eBay and also on Etsy. And if you list them on Etsy, Take time and take really good photos on a shelf and make it real artsy so that the Etsy folks will, you know, the crafty folks, it'll 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 drive attention to, to your listing if you go that route. But they will sell on eBay as well. All right, the downside of this, the downside is they can take up a lot of space, right? Um, they're heavier. You're selling lots. You're selling them all together. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's space and weight. That's the downside if you can get them for the right price. Now, <clears throat> one thing I would say is also, before you put the listing together, make sure you have a box that's big enough to, to put them all together. I would wrap, wrap the books individually, 
make sure that you have a shipping box that's going to work and it will be you know they're not super heavy but even at like a maybe a pound a piece right you throw 10 or 12 of them in there or five or six um, you know you're going to have a heavier box you're going to need something like a maybe a 10 by 12 by 8 type box to do something if you I sold I think a lot of 24 last month and I had to have like a 16 by 24 box it was a really big box tape the corners so that they're safe so that's it that's what you, you see these things hopefully you're in a place where you can source these inexpensively like I can if you can get them for 25 cents a piece or if you're in an estate sale and there's a ton of them ask the people hey what are you going to do with these it, make me a box deal on them and like like I said I got a whole a whole shelf two or three shelves of them all of them for a buck so they're I mean they're, they probably have like three cents each in them so people they don't want to deal with them and they can make decorative book sets that you can make good profit on and it's a good sale something that you can um, you can have fun with if you've got the space and don't mind handling you know book lots so that's it readers digest condensed books be on the lookout for them hopefully it works for you good idea I uh, look forward to your comments and you guys uh, have happy treasure hunting be safe out there and we'll see you next time peace